Hey, what's going on, everybody, and welcome to another episode of our Intro to Personify series. In this episode, we are going to take a look at how atomic design functions within the context of the Personify template. So what do we mean when we talk about atomic design? Well, if you've been a Max member, Corey has talked about this before, going through this atomic design methodology, and atomic design at its core is broken down very simply by this chart here, which is that when you design things out in their simplest form, they are atoms. So that might might be something like a label, right? The search this site part. And then we have the enter a keyword part, and that's another atom. And then we have what a button looks like, and that's yet another atom. And these three atoms come together to form a molecule. Then you can use different molecules together to form organisms and so on and so forth. But I totally get it. This can get complex and can feel a little bit disconnected from the design process. And so what was done in the personify templates over here was to break this down into three simple categories. Atoms, which at their core are going to be the most granular details of our design. This is what a hero heading looks like. This is what a standard heading looks like. This is what our bullet list looks like. This is what a citation looks like, et cetera, et cetera. And you'll notice that we have that throughout the entire component system under atoms. But then we take each of these atoms and we compose them together into the composed components. And now many of these composed components here will leverage various elements of the design system as well. So you'll notice in our slides here, we leverage the heading, which is an atom being used in our composed components. And we leverage our personify content, which is an atom that is being pulled into our composed component. We have our label here, and then we even have our personify image. So each one of those atoms comes together to form a molecule, or in this case, what we're calling composed components. So this is a complete component that is made up of various atoms. Similarly, we have these cards here, which are made up of headlines and content and buttons, and all of that ties back to atoms. And then we have our scaffolding, which is this here, which are the architectural components of our page. So the content inside doesn't really matter. This is what does a standard section look like when we're dealing with a personify section. And this here is what does a hero section look like when we're dealing with a personify hero section. And yet again, this is made up of various atoms to create our scaffolding. So we have this hero section here that has a hero heading. It has personify content. It has a personify button and then a filled in modal button and then it even has a testimonial with a citation now all of this has been pulled together seamlessly into the actual template designs but if you decide that you want to make a change or you want to override some of the changes that come along with a given personify template it is super simple to make those changes you just need to make them at the right level so if we were making a change to the design of our hero header we could do that here maybe we want our hero heading to start off quite a bit smaller we wanted to start off at 2m so it might look like something like this across the board and because this is prefab the next time we use this component here it will start off at a font size of two but if we decided that we wanted to actually change the way that hero headings work or what hero headings look like well and then in that case we're going to jump into our atoms where we've structured the concept of a hero heading we could come into here and say oh hero headings actually need to consist of a very specific spacing and so we'd come into that spacing and we'd say that spacing is five m's and now all of our letters are going to be all spread out all over the place but now this is the new control for our atom so we need to decide which level we're making these changes on whether it's the atoms the composed components or the scaffolding Similarly, we have blog components. These are very much like the composed components, but they've been separated out into their own category just for easy organization, and you can easily add to this as well. And then we also have your form components. And currently, the form components all consist of placeholder forms, but all you need to do to wire up your forms is come in here, click on the personify forms, and choose your WP forms, contact form seven, gravity forms, or embed your own. Now, if you are embedding your own, it may require some additional styling to fit the format but wp forms contact form 7 and gravity forms should look pretty good out of the box 
you can see we can control our newsletter form from here we can also control our contact form from here and we can even control our search form from here that way whenever we want to use these throughout the site so let's jump into our home page here and let's say that we want to add a newsletter right below this here all we have to do is come in here we'll search newsletter where we have our personify newsletter form and we can drag that right out here and there I have my newsletter form and if I need to make a global change to the newsletter forms I can simply come over to the forms here and I can make that change in one simple place similarly if I wanted to add a contact form I could scroll down to the section where I want to add that contact form in I can type contact because that is one of the components that we have saved in our forms components and I can drag that out right here and it automatically inserts our contact form component now there's some surface level changes that we can make right here on a one-off basis so we could give it a width of 100% for this specific use or we can control global changes from the component level within forms now as I've mentioned the great thing about all of this is it can be as off the shelf or as custom as you'd like it to be so everything has been built out out for you here and you can use the templates exactly as they are but if you decide that an icon list should look different for your use case you can simply click on the icon list here jump into the components which is going to link you out to the component library that controls those components and we can scroll down to our icon list here and we could start playing around with how these are structured you'll notice that we have parameters which allow us to tweak this on a use case by use case basis which is how we had the lighter colored feathers on the home page but then we also have baked in controls which are under the primary tab here so if we decide that something like spacing or margin or something like that should no longer be a parameter but should be globally controlled you would simply make that change here in primary and if you want to get rid of parameters that don't make sense for your use case you can simply come up to the cog here click on the edit parameters and in here you'll find all of the parameters that make up each of the individual components so you can inspect those you can change those you can tweak those you can delete things you can add things and you can truly make this yours as always I hope you guys find these videos useful and I will see you guys in the next video happy building